The Lucy Show, starring Lucille Ball. Co-starring Vivian Vance. Jerry. Hurry up. Yeah, we want to play football. Now, just a couple more minutes. We need the practice. Don't you want your mothers to be the best hospital helpers in town? There, I'm finished. <laughs> <laughs> well, what were you treating the patient for? A sprained finger. <laughs> well, girl, don't you think you got a little carried away? I look like a short mummy. <laughs> took off the ruffles and raised the hemline, and it still doesn't look grown up enough. Well, now, I'm sure it'll look grown up enough to boys your age, especially with you in it. Well, I'm not interested in boys my age. There are going to be some older men there, 17 and 18-year-olds. <laughs> Senior citizens. <laughs> just isn't the type of thing a girl should wear to her first formal dance. My dress should be something really special. Well, honey, I guess you're right. Let's see, the dance is tomorrow night. Take me too long to make one. Not if you made it out of bandages. <laughs> Can we go play football now? Yes, darling, you're excused. Hey, wait a minute. Aren't you going to take your bandages off? No, this way they'll figure we're already wounded and won't tackle us so hard. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Be careful now, boys. Well, Chris, there's only one thing to do. Buy you a new dress. Really, Mom? Oh, I never dreamed we could afford to buy me a brand new dress. Well, we can, but I think this is important. Viv, do you think Grindstaffs would have anything that she would like at a price I could afford? They have an apricot taffeta for $39.50. You didn't dream I'd buy you a new dress, huh? <laughs> well. All right, honey, you got it. Oh, Mother, you're wonderful. <laughs> Thanks, love. You're welcome, sweetheart. Viv, honey. Hey, where do you think you're going? I'm trying to get out of the room before you ask me to loan you $39.50. <laughs> now, is that any attitude to take? Lucy, I am flat broke. You really are? Yes, I really are. Well, you ought to budget yourself better. <laughs> you ought to know enough to put something aside for my rainy day. <laughs> well, I'm sorry. Girl, but lately my losses have been running rather heavy at Monte Carlo. <laughs> well, I guess there's only one thing to do. Call the bank and ask Mr. Mooney for an advance on my allowance. Oh, not again. Now, Lucy, you know how he hates for you to dip into your trust fund. Yeah, he sure put a dent in my dipper. <laughs> <laughs> the only way you're gonna get $39.50 is to sandpaper your fingers and break into the vault. Well, this is so terribly important to Chris, I'm just gonna have to take another crack at Mooney. Well, I admire your courage after that great big battle you had with him last month. Oh, well. I'm not one to hold a grudge. Maybe he isn't either. Poo-poo, boy! Oh, poo-poo. Hello? Hello, this is Mrs. Carmichael. I'd like to speak to Mr. Mooney, please. How's that? He's in the hospital. What happened to him? Oh, that's too bad. Well, has someone else at the bank been assigned to take over his duties? Some kind, understanding, generous person? <laughs> no, huh? Well, thanks anyway. Goodbye. Boy, he's got a nerve breaking his leg just when I need him. <laughs> he broke his leg. How did it happen? Going into his house last night, he tripped over the welcome mat. <laughs> How do you like that? My only chance to get the money is in traction. Well, start sandpapering your fingers. Hey, he's in the hospital, and I am a hospital helper. So? So? What man, even a penny-pinching banker, can resist the kind, gentle, loving care of a kind, gentle, loving hospital helper? I'll soften him up, and then I'll hit him for an advance. <laughs> but you're not on duty this week. Well, I'll call Audrey Simmons and have her switch assignments with me. And you call Alice Canfield and have her switch assignments with you. Me? What do you need me for? Sometimes us hospital helpers need helpers. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Viv, wait till you see me in action. I am going to be Mr. Mooney's angel of mercy. I'm going to out Nightingale Florence. <laughs> Now, does that...
that feel a little better? Ooh, ooh yes. That's nice. <laughs> now, is there anything else I can get for you, Mr. Mooney? No, thank you, Mrs. Blake. All right, fine. Well, you just lay here and get your rest. Yeah. <sighs> reporting for duty. Oh, no. And how are we feeling this morning? We have just had a relapse. <laughs> uh, look, Mrs. Carmichael, before yes. I agreed to be hospitalized, they told me that you would not be on duty for two full weeks. <laughs> My only hope is that I'm delirious and you're an hallucination. <laughs> Can I do anything to make you more comfy? Yes. Get out. <laughs> now, Mr. Mooney, that's no attitude to take. While you're here, you are a patient and I am a nurse. My only purpose is to ease your suffering. Oh, how refreshing. <laughs> Usually, your only purpose is to ask for an advance on your allowance. Oh, uh, yeah. Well, uh, uh, what can I do to make things more pleasant for you? Uh, fluff up your Betty by? Betty Bye. Oh, no, thank you. My Betty Bye is sufficiently fluff. All righty. Now then, shall we, uh, shall we crank up your bed a little? If you think you can manage it. Oh, yes, sir. Say, speaking of formal dances... Were we? Well, uh, yes. As a matter of fact, we were. That is, my daughter and I were. Crank, Wait. Mrs. Carmichael, crank, crank, crank. All righty. Sorry. I said crank me up, not put me in orbit. <laughs> Mrs. Carmichael, would you please get out of here before you break my back? No, I'm terribly sorry, Mr. Mooney. You just relax now. Easy does it. Easy does it. Ups a daisy. There we go. There you are. <laughs> now, Mrs. Carmichael, will you leave me alone? Say, speaking of alone. <laughs> Hello? Yes, this is his room. Yes, this is his nurse speaking. Oh, oh, there's a Western Union message for you. Oh, oh yes, I'll take it. Oh, 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 you have to have a pen on you. No, I left it in my other hospital coat. Oh, here's one. I don't suppose you have a piece of paper either, do you? You know, I'm afraid I wasn't planning ahead when I slipped on that welcome mat. Oh, oh all right. Uh, go ahead. Give me the message. Yes. Wishing you a... Uh-huh. Uh, friends at the bank. Uh-huh. I see. And from George, Elaine, Philip, William, Alex, Eric, Dick, and Virginia. Yes. I'm not sure I got all those names. How many were there? Uh-huh. <laughs> If you want to read it. <laughs> Goodbye, Mrs. Carmichael. Oh, I don't have any place to go. I just want to sit here with you and chat a while. Well, I don't feel like chatting. Oh. No. The doctor told me that I had to have plenty of rest. Well, what does he know? <laughs> it just so happens that chatting helps bones to heal. Oh, this may be a major breakthrough in orthopedics. 
Chatting helps bones to heal. Oh, and speaking of heal, that reminds me of toe, which reminds me of feet, which reminds me of dancing. Only and... you would talk about dancing to a man with a broken <laughs> leg. <laughs> Mrs. Carmichael. Yes, sir. I know you are an angel of mercy. Oh. But please take wing. <laughs> Here we are. Oh, I'll take that. Thank you. Thank you. Well, look what we have here, Mr. Mooney, our lunch. We are not very hungry. <laughs> well, now, when we are convalescing, we must take our nourishment so that we get strong enough to get out of our beddy by. Beddy by? <laughs> this is car. <laughs> oh. Oh. Oh, that was very clever of you. <laughs> Oh, yes, a broken rib will take my mind off my broken leg. I'm terribly sorry. Now, you'll feel better after you've had your lunch. Ugh. Now, let's see what we have. Oh, chicken soup. Chicken soup is very good to calm the nerves. Mm. Chatting heals bone. Chicken soup soothes the nerves. Dr. Hutchinson certainly wasted his time going to medical school. Well, that could be, yes. Good. Oh, look at this. Turkey gravy, mashed potatoes, and cream beets. What yummies. Mrs. Carmichael, will you leave me alone with my yummy? No, no, sir. I'm going to feed you. I'm perfectly capable. Oh, of no, you're not. Myself. You're not strong uh, enough Mrs. to feed Carmichael. yourself. Now, Mrs. Let's Carmichael. Mrs. Carmichael. I can feed myself. Now, I'm not a child. Mr. Mrs. Carmichael, I'm going to feed myself. <laughs> strict orders that you are not to be on the third floor. I don't care. I've just got to talk to Mr. Mooney. How is he? Well, he's still pretty groggy from that sedative. That's perfect. It is? Yeah, yeah. While he's groggy, I'll get him to sign a check. That way, he'll be giving me money without knowing it. I said he was groggy, not unconscious. <laughs> well, I just got to get that dress. Now, I think it's worth a try, Viv. Now, Lucy, this whole floor is off limits to you. You'll never make it way down that hall to his room. Oh, yes, I can. I have a plan, but I need your help. Now, come on. Dr. Jackson, Dr. Gilmore, Dr. Ralston, 
Well, now, here we are, Mrs. Edwards. I'll just get your records, and then we'll be on our way to the solarium. Dr. Davis! Say, Dr. Davis! I, I was in the gallery when you operated just now. May I congratulate you on that gastric resection? <laughs> Thank you. I noticed you also repaired a diaphragmatic hernia, besides doing a vagotomy. I did. Oh, I did. <laughs> Say, uh, Dr. Davis, if you have a few moments, I'd be so honored if you'd care to come and observe. I'm doing my first autopsy. <laughs> well, uh, I, I'd love to, but I, I've, uh, I've got to perform another one of those gastric, uh, whatchamacallit. Another one? Uh, it's not on the same man. <laughs> She can't just have disappeared into thin air. That's true. I'm going into the office and phone downstairs and see if they found her. All right. 
pills really sent him bye-bye. Well, what do we do now? Wake him up? Yeah, but we have to be very careful how we wake him up. We want him to be awake enough to sign the check, but not awake enough to know that he's doing it. Mr. Mooney! Mr. Mooney! Come on, Mr. Mooney! Wake up! Mr. Mooney! Hey! Come Mr. on, Mooney. I got an idea. Mr. Mooney! Mr. Mooney! There's a run on the bank! Wake up! <laughs> oh, Mr. Mooney! Hey, you used to live on a farm in Indiana. Maybe this will do it. <laughs> what was that? A rooster. <laughs> well, it sounded more like a lovesick hummingbird. <laughs> I can throw. Let me do it. Okay. Uh, uh, oh, uh, hello, doctor. Uh, oh, hello, uh, Mr. Mooney. Uh, how are you feeling? I feel a little groggy. Uh, yes, well, you feel a lot better uh, once I set your leg. And before I do, I, uh, I have to have your signature on the release oh. to give me permission. Oh, I yes. glad to You just sign right there, Mr. Mooney. <laughs> Here, Mr. Mooney, Mr. Mooney, wake up. Do the rooster again. What, 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 what's the matter? What's, what's that rooster doing in my bank? Yeah, well, that, yeah, that's right, Mr. Mooney. We're at the bank, and, and uh, we're getting up a, a birthday card for Mr. Bentley, the teller, and we want everyone to sign, and you're the last one to sign. Oh, I have a sweet soul. Oh, for he's a jolly good fellow, for he's a jolly good fellow, for he's a jolly good fellow. Mr. Mooney, Mr. Mooney. Oh, he signed it. He did. He got it, yeah. Oh, Let's good. go get the dress. Oh, wait a minute. What? Look at the way he signed it. Theodore J. Betty by. Oh. <laughs> okay. Come on, Mr. Yes, Mooney. Mr. Mooney. Mr. Mooney was do another cock-a-doodle-doo. What's the matter? What's the matter? Remember, Mr. Mooney, you're at the bank and... and we're, we're not, we're not, we're not at the bank. I'm in the hospital. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yes, you're in the hospital yeah. and, uh, and we, we would like you to sign our guest book. Uh, all the important patients. We want to sign our guest book. Oh, that's very flattering. Theodore yeah. J. Mooney. Yeah. M O O N E Y. Oh, <laughs> Mr. Mooney. Oh, Wake up, Mr. Here. Mooney. Come on. What do you do with the pen? The pen's gone? Oh, Lucy. What oh. do you do with the pen? Mr. Mooney, come on now. Maybe, maybe put it under the bed, Lucy. <laughs> Mr. Mr. Mooney. <laughs> Under my cast, Dr. Carmichael. Oh, what do you do? I just wanted you to give me some money so I could buy Chris a new dress. She's going to her first formal dance. Well, in that case, I will give you the advance. It's so important to a teenage girl, her very first formal dance. You will. <laughs> that is the first sensible reason you have ever given for asking for an advance on your allowance. Oh, Mr. Mooney, you're a doll. Quick, Bib, get his leg off here so I can give him a big kiss. Okay. And oh, yeah. let her lie. <laughs>